Xbox enthusiast, Xbox refugee, went to PC, PC's the greatest, Xbox blah blah blah. You know them dudes, right? Oh yeah, you know them dudes, right? You know we got another PS5 enthusiast demanding Xbox games so he can play because Sony has no games, remasters and remakes. You know them dudes, right? You know the ones that are expecting Microsoft to go under just so they can play those beloved games on their own platform. It's so funny that you guys are using PC gaming as a crutch for your little console war argument. I don't need an Xbox. I'll just play them on PC. I don't need a PS5. I'll just play. I'll just wait and play Marvel Spider-Man 2 on my PC. At the end of the day, if you're a Sony fanboy and you like these Xbox games, more than likely you should go pick up an Xbox. If you are an Xbox owner and you see that you like some of these Sony exclusives then more than likely you should pick up a PS5. But see, but there's this constant divide amongst gamers, which I don't understand. Because you guys say that I don't need an Xbox because I'll just play them on PC when 99% of you fanboys don't even have a PC capable enough. Because the reason why I argue that is that why would you play Helldivers 2 on console when you can get the superior version on PC? Just like what you do at Xbox. Oh, I don't need to play Gears E Day like that. I'll just play it on my superior PC. And now you guys are using the Pro as an excuse to say, well, look, I don't need a PC now. Look, I don't care how good Marvel Spider-Man 2 is going to look on there. It looks better than what it was before. You see, y'all got to stop using PC gaming because to be honest with you, they don't care about you and they don't care about this little console war banter that you got going on. And the only reason as to why they make fun of you because they think it's humorous. They're like, why do you guys do this? Why aren't you people just sitting back and enjoying the games like you're supposed to? And of course, with the announcement of the PlayStation 5 Pro. Oh yeah, let's talk about that announcement of Marvel Spider-Man 2 when you PlayStation ponies thought you was going to get some DLC. You know, let's talk about how Sony's putting the PS5 as their top priority when the only thing that they did was put a release date for Marvel Spider-Man 2, which I thought was an exclusive, right? So it's so funny, man. You guys want to have this argument about which console is better. I mean, at this point, it seems like PC is the best option. I mean, you get free online, you get all these games available from Microsoft as well as Sony. Why are you still gaming on console? I just don't see the point in this. Now, I'm not arguing. I, I mean, I love console gaming, but mostly due to physical media. Once you remove physical media out of consoles, I'm done. Because at that point, there's no longevity here. PC has had an ecosystem for over 30 years, and those games are still there. But with consoles, as soon as the console, as soon as Sony and Microsoft say, hey, we're not. Well, I think Microsoft will just carry their stuff to PC. But with Sony, once their PlayStation gaming division is done, all those games are going to be locked to your platform, which means that if my PS5 breaks 10 to 15 years in the future, how am I going to be able to recover those games? That's what's happened with the PS3. They shut the store down. You can't download anything that you purchase. Well, in some cases, they're making it harder to do that. So there's no security there. But at least with Microsoft, every game that I supported on Xbox, regardless of what happens to them in the inevitable future, I can more likely carry that to PC. And that is the vision that I'm trying to tell you guys that even Sony is trying to realize for themselves. But you people want to argue that. Oh, it's not about service and subscriptions. It's about people buying games. Well, if that was the case, then why did Concord and Until Dawn remake fail? It's a dance and all that, but they're clinging on to that $700 price tag, and they're worrying about stands and all that stuff, and they talk shit, don't get it, don't pre-order it. What is there not to get? The PS5 Pro ain't, wor ain't worth the money until we see the specifications of the console. You guys are claiming it to be the most powerful, which I would hope it would be, it would be more powerful than the Series X. Sony would be completely stupid to even match the level of the Series X by having a little bit more features and it would be more negligible. But we have to see the spec sheet. You know, I'm tired of all these assumptions, man. We got to see the facts in front of us. And then we can sit there and have these discussions. Blah, 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 making content. And then all of a sudden, they pre-order it themselves. You know, oh yeah, just like how you said Xbox had no games, but then these are the same people that buy High Five Rush and Sea of Thieves on the PS5. You see, there's a lot of contradictions going on in this gaming community. And Porter Rock, you happen to be one of them. You know, like I understand that you don't play on PC, but there's so many of these Sony fanboys that say, oh, I play on PC. But then why did you buy Helldivers 2 for the PS5? Why did you, black, buy, why did you buy Black Myth Wukong on PS5 if you could have played the superior version on PC? 
doesn't make sense to me. Despite having a supposed more powerful gaming PC. Now listen, do what you want. It's your money, whatever. You know, it is what it is, right? I'm not I'm not pocket watching. Tell people not to buy a product and then you go buy it yourself. I I don't know what that is. I don't know. Yeah, just like you tell people that Xbox has no games, but then you're supporting them on PlayStation. It's like it, it, it's so funny because it's like he does go as far to speak on this behalf. When did you call to gamers care so much about PC gaming that you're using it as a crutch to knock each other? And like I said, this is just something I've been noticing. Oh, I don't need an Xbox. I'll just play them on PC. I don't need a PS5. I'll just wait one to two years to play them on my PC. These are the excuses that they use. And this is why you know your consoles are trash. That don't make sense to me, you know? Yeah, it doesn't make sense as to why you would pick up a PS5, but yet port bag for every single Xbox game to come to Sony. It's like, if you like Xbox games that much, I mean, you guys can't say that you don't, because if you did, why are you asking for these games in the first place? I, I mean, there's just a lot of hypocrisy, guys. And creators doing all this content saying why this is a bad idea, don't buy this, buy that, don't buy this, buy that. Oh, you're stupid, you're a fanboy, you're an idiot if you buy this. And then you just end up It's not the fact that you're a fanboy for buying it. You're a fanboy for expecting the PS5 Pro to... To knock the socks off it's not going to be that impressive see this is what you people don't understand man keep using these digital foundry comparisons bro it's a split hair difference in a lot of the games that they've showed like it is what it is man as much as you people want to keep defending the pro we already see the results and it really not that impressive in comparison to the ps5 base I i'm just being honest in it yourself What's going on here? To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, this is Frog Boy Gaming. I think you see them is interested in having a secondary device, and because of the performance, they're willing to accept that. So they'll get a PS5 Pro, maybe for the, the exclusives, the time exclusives that don't well, come. What exclusives does Sony have? See, this is another argument. Your games are going to PC. What exclusive games are you talking about, bro? Like, where, where were you? Did you see the Marvel Spider Man 2 drop it on PC? How is that an exclusive? on pc and maybe they don't want to wait like grand theft auto 6 could be one of those games they could be like you know what i don't want to wait and that's probably going to be the only game unfortunately here's or whatever for grand theft auto 6 especially since it's online centric right well, not online centric but it has a huge online component that's very popular they may not want to wait two years before they jump into the live service part so they'll probably get a pro because they'll finally give them the performance because maybe the performance of the series x and the ps5 is just not to their liking because they enjoy what they have a PC, well, PS5 Pro is closer, maybe closer to what they enjoy. That's another one. Yeah, right? so you'll get a more stable 30. I mean, that's going to be very hard for them to do, considering that the CPU is the same exact thing. Another way Sony can make money software-wise is Xbox console gamers. They could be like, you know what? I'm sick of the Xbox consoles. It's, it didn't ultimately give them what they want. They're going to trade in the Xbox and buy a Pro. So they can finally get the performance and stuff like that, you know? What do you, what do you mean? It should be the opposite. You should be trading your PS5 for a Series X. That's why Space Marine runs better on the Series X. What, what are you talking about? And the funny thing is, I don't see people doing that. Even if the perform... Like, like, for example, I played RoboCop on the PS5, and the Xbox version is better, but that didn't make me want to trade my PS5 because of it. What, what do you... What do you what, what's up with you people, bro? Like, you guys want to have the superior and everything, but which is funny, because only PC can provide you that experience, not a console. There's going to be Xbox gamers that don't really like first party that hypes juicy 30 FPS. Juicy 30 FPS ain't really that juicy for a lot of gamers. So that's how you make money through software and all that stuff like that. But a PS5 gamer that already plays on PS5, jumping to Pro, there's no extra money in the ecosystem from that. Really? There's no extra money by you spending $700 for an upgrade to a console that made nothing but a bunch of false promises. It's funny that you go as far to say that the PS5 Pro is going to be 4K60. But that's what y'all said with the base PS5. So now we're starting to see that you guys have been lying the whole time. We already knew this. It's, it's fine. I mean, most people have already were fully aware about this. But it's so funny 
to find out that these people are using the narrative of 4K60 again. You guys used it with the base PS5. So if the base PS5 is 4K60 and the Pro is 4K60, then explain to me where the difference is. Aha, got you guys on your own logic. We freaking daft. I bought an Xbox Series X Xbox, telling them that they had no games and they were just buying Xboxes to play old games. Now, well, y'all did because y'all hyped goddamn backwards compatibility. Y'all literally hyped Xbox One games. You're saying there's no games coming out. There's always new games coming out. Uh, a PlayStation pony talking about Xbox hyping up backwards compatibility when you out here paying full prices for for PS4 games that are released. Like, bro, I don't even have to go through the list. You guys know exactly what I mean. I'm tired of it. But how are you going to go as far to say that Xbox dudes don't have the right to be happy about Xbox One backwards compatibility when what's provided is free? You are paying to upgrade your game. You are paying for another console to upgrade your game. You're, you're paying to upgrade your PS4 version to the PS5 version. And if you don't have that version, you got to pay full price. How are you going to sit there and compare this to what Microsoft's doing with their backwards compatibility? That's got to be the biggest cap that I've ever seen, man. It's not just exclusive to first party. It's also third party new games. Put it this way. If you stay on your Xbox Series X or your PlayStation 5 Pro and we all buy, let's say, Assassin's Creed, you know, the new one that comes out in April, whenever. They delayed it, whatever, right? You're going to play the best version on the PS5 Pro. The best version is going to be on PC. Let's get that situated. And the PS5 Pro ain't even going to be that much better. I'm telling you, man, you guys are getting your hopes up, man. The CPU is the same exact thing. You might get maybe a little graphical boost, depending if the game's not as demanding. But it's going to be severely bottlenecked, at least from what I'm hearing. But we still need to see the spec sheet. Right? Now, the Xbox Series X, the PS5 base is fine. You know, whatever, whatever. But all these new games coming up over the next couple of months... The ones who have the best versions in terms of being a console gamer are the ones who owns the Pro. It's going to be that way. The absolute best version is the Pro. The only gamers that's going to have a better version than PS5 Pro are PC gamers. No one else, right? And that's assuming you have the hardware. So now you... why, does that, why doesn't that disvalue the PS5 then? See, this is what I don't understand. You guys use the PC argument to disvalue Xbox. But you can't use the PC argument to disvalue PlayStation in the same department. If you're one of them 2070 guys, 2050 guys, 3040 guys, your, your, your PC is not running the game better. Right? You have to have a certain... Let's give some of this flow. To have a damn good reason for me to spend another $700 on a console that's only going to last four years. They, they better have a damn good reason for me to invest that money into this console. And from what I've seen, there's not much. I Alright, so you got him, right? That's me not doing it. Now this is a... Uh, uh, okay, we already went 26 gigabytes for all 16 gigs of memory, right? And then of course the PSSR, which is AI scaling, that's already outclassing um, FSR 3.1. You could uh, Digital Foundry just released a video on it, um, what? The first of many, right? And you already see PSSR already beating out um, FSR 3.1, right? PSSR ain't so even beating just... out PS5 games because I can't even notice the difference depending on your own television. Excited for it, right? So of course, a lot of the Xbox fans, Xbox refugees, and all that stuff—they're going at him. They say, "Oh, I don't know what's up." D Bass jumped the boat. He's grifting. He's trying to get PlayStation money and stuff like that. Let's let's just check this out real quick, right? Version, uh, you know, a one terabyte version with this for four hundred. You know, they already explained. Nothing says a more powerful with performance, new hardware, and whatever, whatever. What? But he didn't believe it, and I don't think... Because See, I'm trying to get to certain key points in this video because he kind of drags out, but let me it's see. Foolish. It's only because, and I understand, it really does sound stupid. Microsoft letting Sony just completely all by themselves with what? no one to compete, right? What do you mean nobody to compete with? There's no competition, bro. What do you people don't understand, man? These companies are trying to expand their gaming divisions. Like, you know what, man? I, I really don't understand as to why you people have these mindsets from the 90s, bro. Of course, people are trying to use PC to compete. The $700 PC, but that's really all y'all got. And that uh -oh. $700 PC is oh, trash, go. so let's not even lie to us. Yeah, right? apparently the PS5 for $500 must be trash, too. 
not gonna step into a power word. Yeah, okay. You'll be lucky if the Switch 2 competes with the PS4 Pro. That's funny. This is it. Uh oh, let's hear this it. Is it. Get ready, guys. Get ready. This is it. Let's hear this it. Is it. Lead anybody when it comes to anything. So, you guys probably want to know about the title of this video. Let's skip. Picking up a PlayStation 5 Pro. <laughs> And I've seen a lot of people. Yo, I want to say, I want to say, let me, let me put that. Regardless, same thing. Like, there's PC gamers that are not going to spend the money to buy a 4090. They're not going to do it. Regardless of how much better it is over there. Yeah, it, and there's going to be some people that are not going to be willing to spend $700 on a pro. It is what it is, especially if they're playing the same games. 60 that they're playing on, or the 4070 that they're playing on. Hell, some of them are playing on the 3080. Hell, some of them are still playing on the 3060. They're not going to buy a 4090. It's way too much cost. That's perfectly fine. But do not lie to yourselves uh -oh. that the performance difference or the money and the value between the performance difference is wrong. It's off. That, oh, yeah, the PS5 Pro should it be is. $500. Bro, Microsoft is selling a $600. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly what I wanted to get to. And all yep. it has is sprinkles and an extra terabyte. Oh, really? Oh, really? You're going to go as far to say that the Xbox Series X is just an extra terabyte? Uh, what is it? A t not a terabyte. Terabyte? But guess what? You don't need no vertical stand, and it has a disk drive. And the Xbox Series X is more than powerful enough to the point where Sony has to make up for those lost te two teraflops. Let's not forget. So for you people to say that, and the CPU is much better on the Series X as well. That's why games on Unreal Engine 5, for some reason, happen to run better. So there's no reason for Microsoft to have to upgrade their console. That's why it's pointless. That's probably why Microsoft says we don't need to. What is the point of doing that if y'all going to be playing the same games? It's not going to be that much of a difference. On, on highly demanding games, you're not going to see that much of an improvement on the Pro. Maybe on like Unreal Engine 4, maybe on like games that are struggling a little bit. Maybe for those games, but any next-gen game, I, I really think it's going to be negligible. You know, maybe it might slightly look better in the graphics department, but we have to see the spec sheet, guys. I can't go off anything besides assumptions until we see the specs for myself you're telling me the ps5 pro which much more significant improvement to performance there's no sin wow. there's no sin no 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 there's not there's no significant improvement to performance and we know that already because the cpu is the same exact thing see now you out here capping this is this is the point that i wanted to get to in this video technology is 500 xbox series x 600 for an extra terabyte which is equal to the PS5 Pro. And let's not forget a disk drive. Why do you completely keep grossing over that fact? Oh, two terabytes. So $600 with no margin for nothing. It's the same exact game you're going to run. Same exact performance. Nothing. That's so funny that you're saying the same exact games you're going to run. And you're doing the same thing with the PS5 Pro. Bro, you know, somebody get this man up out of here. Nothing changes. You got a little bit of bedazzle and an extra terabyte. 600 PlayStation 5 Pro, oh, that should be 500. Despite that, it's going to be the best, most powerful console. No, we don't know that. Like I said, man, until we see the specs, then we can see. Because as of right now, these comparisons that Digital Foundry is doing are not impressing me. You can even look at the comment section. Even most diehard PlayStation fans are like, man, I really don't see no difference in Ratchet's hair. Yeah, I'm just being honest. This is something a good TV could fix. That's how bad it's looking. And what's even worse is that Sony's using PS4 games and a PS3 remake of Last of Us Part 1 to introduce this console. I, I don't know, man. Right? It's going to have the best version of console games. No. no other... The PS5 Pro is going to have the best version of PS3 and PS4 games for console. That, that's what it's going to have. You know, you're going to have the PS5 Pro is essentially... Uh, all right, let's go through the list of updates. Last of Us Remake. Updated for the PS4, updated for the PS4 Pro, updated for the PS5, and now updated for the PS5 Pro. This is ridiculous, bro. Like, if you really think about it, y'all like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Last of Us 1 for the PS3, PS4, the upgrade with the remaster with the 60, upgraded again with the PS4 Pro, upgraded again when they made it for the PS5, and now they're going to take that same PS5 game and update it with the Pro. I, I, y'all y'all looking forward to this? Console's going to match it. You see how silly this all mistakes? That's why these frauds are getting it. Listen, these guys are console gamers at heart. 
It's just that this gym for some people, you know, I think it's more Twitter, to be honest, right? Like, listen, I talk trash on Twitter. I talk, you know, I do and stuff like that. Trust me. And I advise that to you. Do not let social media, even my channel, whatever, sway you into anything. Buy what you buy. Enjoy what you enjoy. Don't worry about these random strangers trying to pocket watch, telling you to buy this or oh, don't be stupid at that. Hell, if they don't know your first name. But see, but the problem is, though, is the fact that you guys sit there and tell people they don't need an Xbox because you're thinking that all their games are coming to PS5 and you can play all the Xbox games on PC. But when Sony puts their games on PC, how dare you say, oh, I don't need a Sony product. You know what I'm saying? Look, I mean, this man look like he crying right now. I, I, I mean, it's true. Like, it's so funny that when Sony puts games on PC, you still need a PS5. Xbox puts games on PC. You don't need an Xbox no more. It's the hypocrisy. Then you go as far to say that we're all console gamers. Nobody's going to care about the PC anyway. So why are you poor begging for Xbox games? Why aren't you just buying an Xbox to play them? Why are you hoping for Microsoft to go under or some other bad situation, which is only harming the gaming community, mind you, than to just pick up an Xbox? If you hate Xbox that so much, pick up a Series S. At least you can say, oh, okay, I'm somewhat involved in the Xbox. I might not be the biggest fan, but I got a Series S for $299. There's a lot of power, decent amount of power under that hood there. But no. Y'all, for some reason, don't want one. You would rather wait 10, 15, I don't know, how, well, however how long, to play Xbox games on your PS5. Or should I say PS5 Pro? Then they don't matter. That's how I see it. He even goes know? as far to say that, you know, oh, I, I'm, let me get to this one point. Hold on. Because I actually want to talk about this. $100. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Right? No different than PC. If you want more stuff on PC, you want more performance PC, you got to pay. 4090 is more expensive than a 4070. 4070 is more expensive than a 4050. Yeah, but there's differences in the improvements. It's so funny that you go as far to say that the PC... It's, it's so funny how console gamers acting like they're not PC gamers themselves because you bought a $500 console and the false pretense that it was 4K, 120 frames, 8K, whatever, right? And now you're buying a PS5 Pro believing it's going to be the same thing. Like, you guys are dummies. You got to pay more if you want more performance and all that stuff, right? It is what it is. But here's the thing. Uh -oh. You don't have to buy it. That's what's weird, right? People are mad that the product exists, right? The I mean, I could say the same thing about Xbox. Y'all mad that the console exists, even though Microsoft ain't really doing nothing to y'all. Existence of the product is what people are annoyed about. Bro, That's you know, funny, because y'all do this with Xbox all the time. You don't like it. You don't want it. Stick with your PS5. Believe me. The all because you want to... I wanna... understand if Sony cancel and says hey the ps5 sim will be discontinued you're not playing the better version oh this is why it gets juicy that while you're playing your game on your console gamers you know that there's a version that is playing full fidelity with better image quality and is doing at 60 frames uh, i thought the ps5 was already doing that i thought the ps5 was doing 8k i thought the ps5 was doing 120 frames I thought PS5 was already doing 4K60. What are you talking about? Well, you are stuck having to choose one or the other. You want full fidelity? Cool. You get it at 30 frames. Oh, you want 60 frames? Well, you're going to have to accept lower What image. makes you guys think that you're going to get fidelity and performance in the way that you guys are thinking? Now, I do think that Sony is trying to do that, and that's why Rebirth is the way it is. But you would be a fool thinking you're going to get 4K60 out of that game. Because you're not. You're going to get a cleaner image. The game is going to look a little bit better. It's not going to have that blurry filter that the PS5 version had. But it's not. It's probably going to be like 1340, like 1440p, I would assume. Or at least that's what they're going for. Or a dynamic resolution. Or they're going to scale the resolution depending on air. Probably more likely that. Probably by 900p to 1296. Something like that. You know what I mean? You know, while also hitting the 60. You're not going to get 4K60 out of this game with the Pro quality no resolution no ray tracing things like that so and you're saying that ps5 owners are gonna have to compromise but you're still compromised what do you mean you're not getting the experience that you think that, that you believe it's upsetting you guys right maybe because you don't want to spend the 700 maybe you can't spend 700 whatever the situation is somebody else is going to have an amazing playstation 5 experience 
and you can't jump on that. If it would have been four hundred dollars, five hundred, you would have jumped. You would have been like, oh hell yeah, but it's seven hundred, and that's probably a mark that's just way out of your pocket range or what you're willing to invest in a console. Yeah, but, well, a console with no games. The fact that it exists and there are people that are be like seven hundred is nothing. I got it. And we're going to have, we are going to have an amazing experience on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Much better leap than that. Bruh, you, you guys are doing too much. And this is what I'm saying. I, I don't think it's the problem of people picking up the PS5 Pro. I think the issue stems from the fact that you guys are thinking that there's going to be some groundbreaking new technology when you're out here playing remasters upon remasters. Like, you're not even using next generation games as a template. You're using PS4 remakes to essentially show, oh, this is where the PS5 Pro is getting its power from. And the crazy part is, it's also pissing off the PC gamers, the mid-range gamers, because the mid-range gamers want to say, hey, my mid-range is better than a console. And right now, it's not. See, but the difference is, though, their mid-range, actually, that's actually actually wrong in that statement. Because if we're going off the logic of you picking up a PS5 and upgrading to the PS5 Pro then that means that mid-range PC could also do the same thing. They can invest that $700, $800 into their mid-range PC, and guess what? It already destroyed your console in the dust. See, this is what you people don't understand. You guys are looking at it from the standpoint where, oh, the PC gamer is building their PC. If the PC gamer already has this mid-range PC like you claim, and they see, oh, I want to upgrade it, what you're doing with the PS5 Pro, right, man? There you go. Now that P mid-range PC is far better than what you're getting with the Pro. The end. See, this is what you people don't understand. When you buy something on PC, you see a difference. When you buy something on console, it's negligible because it's all locked. It's restrictive in what you can do. These $700, $800 PCs, these 3050s that you guys are playing on, these 3060s, these bullshit 2050s and all that stuff, yeah, you're getting smoke check with the Pro, right? You guys, you need the upper echelon. You need the higher tier PCs. You need you need the 4070s and stuff. Just you like need... you need a higher tier PlayStation 5 Pro. You know what, man? <laughs> Better hardware. You need to spend money. You need them, you know, 1300 and plus. All you $700, $800 PCs. Which is exactly... Hold on, you just said... Hold on. You just said you need... Thir- let, let's rewind that. Hold on. The king of cap. Let's hear it. Your PCs. You need, you need the 4070s and stuff. You Listen. need better hardware. You need to spend money. You need them, you know, 1300 and plus. You just said 1300 and plus, right? To have a P- to have a PC better than a PS5 Pro. Guys, check this out. I'm going to break it down for you. How much is the price of a PS5 if you had one since launch? $500, right? We're not including tax. $700 for the Pro. How much is that, guys? $1200. If you have a physical catalog, more likely you're going to get that disk drive. That's thirteen. That's close to $1,300. That's actually about, no, that's about $1,300. <laughs> so what, <laughs> what argument are you bringing up? This is why I try to explain to you. It doesn't make sense. But see, but the difference is the PC gamer is going to see a drastic difference in performance and resolution while you people ain't. That's the difference. You are using it for old games, sitting there saying, well, you guys need 1300 and plus, which is essentially what you paid for two devices of PlayStation. Case closed. Already destroyed you. All you $700, $800 PC gamers, yes. You know, all you $500 PlayStation 5 owners upgrading for $700 equals about close to $1,300 with tax. Hey, I'm speechless. Post. Your shit is toast. You know what I'm saying? That shit's... Nix that shit. Bump up, bump up your specs. Pay some more money. Start dropping... That, that, that's funny, because that's exactly what Sony's doing to you. Some dollars. Because them budget shits ain't working. Them Walmart $700 PCs ain't cutting it. Right? And that's pissing y'all off. It is what it is. Ain't, ain't nobody it. mad about that, man. I, I think I might have missed one point. I was trying to get to it at the end of this video, but it's fine. Like I said, he goes far to say that, you know, the PS5 is going to be pro is going to be 4K 60. Uh, like I said, you guys still believe in these false promises. You guys can still continue to believe that if that's what you think you're going to get with most demanding titles. So keep enjoying your remasters and remakes, because at the end of the day, you just said you need about $1,300 to outbeat the pro. 
out of the two consoles that you purchased, you've already eclipsed that $1,300 margin. So what point did you prove, Porter Rock? Did you just prove how much of an idiot that you are? You made fun of a mid-gen $700, $700 PC, but then go as far to say... And, and see, they're acting like as if the PC gamer can't upgrade like what they're doing. But see, but the difference is, a PC gamer can upgrade, and then upgrade, and then upgrade, and then upgrade. Once you get that pro, that's all you get. If there's problems in some games, you can't improve you can't improve the performance. You can't improve the resolution. See, this is this is what you don't understand. But like I said, man, you bodied your own argument when you just said you need about $1,300 to have a PSPC better than a pro. You just destroyed your argument because that's exactly how much you spent buying those two PS5 devices. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, man. And like I said, take care.